Wilsey. Hey, I'm Shami Gowie. And I'm David Keener. And this is our Link's podcast project. Well, we made it through January, um, barely. So uh, we were going to just touch base to see where we were doing. We haven't really got a topic on, so we're just going to talk about what's new with us. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing good. How about you, bud? I think we had a better January than you did, Marty. Yeah, uh, everybody had a better January than I did. Uh, and I'm doing good. Today's like really the first day that um, I feel like I've turned the corner after my accident. Um, maybe, maybe people don't know, uh, I got in a mountain bike accident and I dislocated my shoulder and I shattered my collarbone and broke a couple ribs and um, it sucked. And so I've been, uh, you know, really uh kind of on the wounded list for a couple of weeks and today was really the first day that i was doing better because uh today last night my ribs didn't bother me while i was sleeping and you never realized how much you enjoy breathing until you can't do it and uh yeah, last night i actually the alternatives though. For real and actually breathe without it hurting me so i slept uh a lot better last night and um it's it's crazy how uh important sleep is for you is that gonna do well surgery your... i had surgery and i got you know pins and plates and screws to put my collarbone back together so all that's reassembled and fully functional now although which, still tender which and, is also, um, also very science fictional given that you are now even more of a cyborg than you were before <laughs> Yeah, I have I have lots of uh, metal embedded in my body, holding it together in various places. It's uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, I have lots of metal around my body, taking me various places. That's right. So that there you true. go. The wonders of technology. Yes, sir. Is a good benefit for science fiction authors. So yeah. that that uh, literally derailed you. Is it going to derail your twenty twenty three goals? No, I don't think so. I mean. It just put a full stop. You know, I'll pick up. It'll take me a few days to get my momentum back. Yeah. But it uh, it'll be it'll be rolling. I uh, um, as long as I don't hit any other big snafus throughout the year, you know, I kind of in my schedule have buffer space put in for vacations and procrastination and you know fooling around. But I yeah. uh, need to really totally get back in the discipline stick. And uh, start writing in like it's a job because it is, and I've been falling in sick a lot lately. <laughs> Amen. You've used up all your sick time, dude. That's right. I used up all my sick time, and uh, the next amount of sick time I'll be using will be to take care of my wife when she goes in for surgery in April, maybe. So we'll see. Uh, so anyway, the January didn't get a whole lot of writing done in Marty's world. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's nice that I can even pick up my, my coffee mug with my right hand. So that's that's a win. That's a win, for sure. It's the little things, really. <laughs> yeah. So, Shay, tell us, tell us about your book. It what's, what's new in my world? Yeah, so I had my book come out. It came out in December. Hockey's Hidden Gods, because Dave always tells me to plug the title. Um, that's right. Good job. And it's been fun promoting it. Um, it appeared on the Jumbotron at the Caps game for two games. So that's a lot of uh, a lot of bodies around that uh, image. Um, I was actually able to attend one of the games, too. That was cool to get my picture taken and, you know, record the announcer using his big announcer voice to say how awesome the book is. That was kind of fun to watch and listen yeah. to. Um, and then did a little book signing locally for friends, family, neighbors, a couple of strangers. And I did that at an ice rink. So there were some hockey practices and scrimmages going on around me that people could stop by and walk and take a look at and come back to my table. It was a good setting. Um, lots of passerby, lots of people to, to uh, to talk to, although I do have um, I do have one funny tip for uh, anyone who's thinking about doing a book signing and bringing their own, you know, swag and and 
uh, signage and stuff like that that we've talked about on this podcast before. I had a brilliant, what I thought was a brilliant idea. I got this colorful wheel that you could put on your table. And I wrote with a marker, you could you could erase it and add things. I wrote things like, you know, um, $1 off or $5 off your second purchase or um, a, a free hockey card. I got like a whole box full of these little hockey cards. Um, and I put it on the de- on the table and every single kid had to spin that thing like 5,000 times until they got what they wanted, which was the hockey cards. And then come over to me and say, I won, I won, I won. And I have to give them a card. And then sure enough, they run away without having any interest in, in looking at your book. Um, the parents were like tugging them, tugging them away from the wheel, yelling at them. And so finally I put the wheel away and kids would come up and say, where's the wheel? I had to say, uh, it broke. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, we, the wheel has retired. <laughs> Sorry. So um, a little tip, if you're going to have a wheel that's colorful and has little prizes on it, maybe shoot for an older audience for your book signing. <laughs> Something like a quiet bookstore or a coffee shop. Don't choose a Saturday at an ice rink when every single kid is getting lessons and playing on their teams and all have to spin your wheel. So that's what I learned that day. But other than that, it was a pretty good day. I made some some great sales. Um, I almost doubled my investment uh, in books and it was very uh, successful in that way. And what's next? And then I'm I'm planning to do a couple more promos, um, radio, podcast interviews, um, and maybe even for the uh, NHL headquarters, which we've made some contacts with. They're interested in hosting me and uh, maybe doing something with them. So, uh, Where are they? Yeah. Who are they? No, where is it? Oh, where uh, This will be in New York. I don't know if it's the only headquarters, but it's their New York headquarters. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm excited about that. I don't know if I can say any specific details until it happens, but um, that will be really fun. So that's my update. As far as my book, my personal update is I got these really sexy new glasses and I'm like rocking them on my podcast now. I have no biological need for glasses. I have 20 20 vision. I'm very proud of that because hell, my body had to compensate for something. And I guess it was vision, but I want to keep it that way. And I read that blue light is really bad for your eyes. So these glasses are actually just um, blue light blocking. That's all they do. And um, I like them. Make me, make me look very smart because, uh, you know, I need something to make me sound smart, look smart. Uh, I sure can't do it these, on my own. Well, it's your book is on screen right now, uh, just to the side of you. We'll make sure we'll put a link to it in uh, the description for the episode as well. Thank you, guys. Yep. Give it an order and drop me a line and I'll send you a book plate to sign. That rhymed. Look at that. All right, Dave, on to you. <laughs> uh, for me... Uh, let's see. Um, something has happened already in uh, in January. Um, I, I have found out that uh, I'm going to have stories in four anthologies published this year. Um, that is uh, rather a record for me. Um, and and one of them is uh, is sort of a, a top ranked uh, full price professional a- anthology um, for a hope punk story that I've got or a climate punk story. Uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased to find that out. And let's see, uh, I've got a, I've got a bunch of projects, but, uh, one of the ones I'm, I'm working on is a story I did called, uh, Death Comes to Town in a somewhat shorter form. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually expanding it a bit, uh, for a, a solo publication as a book. Excellent. And then cool. as a writing group... Um, we decide on our next anthology theme as the Arrowings. So yep. we'll be doing clocks, um, you know, incorporating giant clocks, little clocks, watches, stopwatches, time travel. Watches. <laughs> time travel. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, haunted Just clocks, stories. whatever. So um, that's, that's cool. People seem to be pretty excited about that theme and uh, getting a lot of positive feedback. A lot of people have already emailed me, said, hey, I'm in. Make sure I'm on the email list. So cool. that's uh, that's that's going well. I'll be uh, I'll be producing the that anthology myself this year as well. Gotcha. Need help? Just let us know. Although yeah. I hear you've enlisted some real pros to help you out. That's right, including David. 
<laughs> oh, what a plug. <laughs> Um, yeah. So what's next for you guys? Like what's the next big writing thing in your agenda? Well, I was going to, uh, tomorrow go on a writer's retreat, uh, which mm -hmm. has been canceled because, um, of recent events. Right. So that's, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to push that off for a month. So my yep. spring writer's retreat will happen in March. Okay. Um, that's the next big thing for me. Cool. But I got, I'm going to finish off a novel. Um, between now and then, I'm hoping to get the, you know, the second draft done. I can't imagine I'll get the final draft done be by then, but, uh, uh, knowing me, but, uh, yeah, sh should be, uh, should be back working full time starting next week. Awesome. My next big thing is, um, the artist has finished the cover for, um, Overboard, my upcoming fantasy book. And so that is moving the needle. So it's off to now the, um, the the gentleman who's going to do like the interior design and uh, you know, situate my author photo and everything. Um, so we're we're moving and shaking, and I'm hoping for a late spring launch of that. Maybe like right after I get out of this semester of school, so I can party and focus on promo and all that jazz. So sometime around early May, late April. Cool. What's mm -hmm. next for you, David, before we close up? So uh, um, I have a, a story uh, that I think worked out pretty well for me that is appearing in another anthology this year. It's called uh, Jonelle Cross. It's about a, um, a, a sort of a Victorian-influenced mage uh, detective uh, and part-time uh, demon hunter. Uh, so I've been plotting a whole series of uh, sequels to that story uh, featuring her and uh, some of the other characters uh, around her. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing a whole set of uh, set of stories, um, you know, in that series. Cool. Well, great. We'll keep this episode short this week. We've been running kind of long lately, which is all right. But uh, um, we'll keep it mixed up. So that's good enough for this week. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for stopping in. Take Talk care. to you then. <laughs>